Kurti insists on the signing of the agreement, which President Vucic would not sign. On the other hand, the President of Serbia opposed the recognition of Kosovo's inter uh, territorial integrity and eventual membership in the United Nations. How do you see these two positions? So I think that's a really important point you've raised. And I think, again, if you look at the leader's statement, they speak to this a little bit as well. They laid out their expectations for both Kosovo and Serbia, that they deliver on their commitments to implement fully the agreement on the path to normalization. And they note in it that they want to see this done, quote, without preconditions or delays. Mm -hmm. Later on in their statement, they talk about that formalities, including related to adoption, should not stand in the way of progress on achieving this full and complete implementation of the agreement and its implementing annex by both sides. So from our perspective, while we acknowledge the interest of Prime Minister Kurti in achieving a signature, we think that's much less relevant than the actual importance of moving forward full and complete implementation of all the obligations of the agreement by both sides. I could give you lists of other agreements that weren't necessarily signed, mm -hmm. but that are legally binding, including in the dialogue process. Um, and I will restate that the United yeah. States and the European Union do believe the basic agreement and the implementing annex to be legally binding. Mm -hmm. The European Council, I think, adopted it in its conclusions. The European Union announced that they're going to build into the uh, EU accession protocols for Serbia and the stabilization and association agreement for Kosovo, their obligations. So there should be no question about whether these obligations are firm and binding. And... We think it's more important to be focused less on the manner in which it is adopted and more on the obligations reached. Since you raised some of the issues that Serbia yeah. has raised, in particular this question of Kosovo's territorial integrity and ultimate membership in the United Nations, let me be clear about the position of the United States of America. Uh, we acknowledge Kosovo's territorial integrity, and we have made real commitments to, to support and protect and defend that territorial integrity. There is a NATO mission in Kosovo of over 4,500 soldiers who have a job to do, including the protection of what, the boundary between Kosovo and Serbia, what I will call a border. Mm -hmm. That includes substantial hundreds of American soldiers who are here committed to protecting to, to this mission of a safe and secure environment and freedom of movement that includes respect for the boundaries, the borders mm -hmm. of Kosovo. With regard to eventual membership in the United Nations, the United States view is very clear. We support Kosovo's trajectory towards European and Euro-Atlantic structures. We support Kosovo's ultimate membership in the family of nations. We supported that from the beginning. That continues to be a priority goal for us. Ultimately, this normalization process, from our perspective, has to end with mutual recognition. That's the only way forward in the long term. We see this process right now towards normalization relations as an interim step in this longer term process. So. When leaders of Germany, France, and Italy say, move forward with full implementation of all of your obligations without preconditions, mm -hmm. I see that, we see that as a response to your question. Yeah. And the preconditions would include the signature, and they would also include trying to exclude commitments made. We looked Serbia and Kosovo would implement fully all of their obligations under the agreement. Yeah. And the, the concrete question is, why, why, why not now recognizing each other? Kosovo and Serbia for, for making a, a, a big well, step or a big deal between the two countries. I, c 